Hiking comfortably to the extent that you don't have to stop and catch your breath actually has very little to do with fitness and more to do with carbon dioxide accumulating in the blood. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can improve your hiking respiration simply by sitting down and focusing on the breath and doing a little bit of breath training as part of your preparation. I'm going to walk you through one of the most basic breathing exercises. I'm going to explain what's happening at a biochemical level inside of your blood and I'm going to encourage you to relax during this process. The first exercise that I'm gonna take you through is called box breathing. And the reason it's called box breathing is because there's four phases of each breath. There's the inhale, there's the brief hold after the inhale, there's the exhale, and there's the hold after the exhale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take three seconds for each of those phases. So we can begin together. So take a breath in, two, three, hold, two, three, exhale, two, three, hold, two, three, inhale, two, three, hold, two, three, exhale, two, three, hold, two, three, inhale, two, three, hold, two, three, exhale, two, three, hold, two, three. Now, if you're exceedingly comfortable doing that, you could extend that to four seconds, which is the typical starting point for box breathing. And by the way, this uh, exercise is well documented. It's been used by Navy SEALs and a lot of other special forces. And the reason it's been used in special forces and law enforcement is because of its ability to calm the mind and calm the body and to relax. And when we're relaxed, we make better decisions and hopefully we don't kill anyone as a result. So that's box breathing. Now you could extend those numbers up to 15 or even longer. I've experimented with taking one breath per minute. So that would be 15 seconds on the inhale, 15 second hold, 15 seconds on the exhale, and then a 15 second hold. Now, would I recommend you go and do that? Uh, no. If you try and do that, you're going to get a very severe stress response from the body. Now I wanna talk about what that stress response is. And the key molecule there is carbon dioxide. So when we breathe in, we breathe in a mixture of air, which mainly the most important gas there is oxygen. And as you're probably aware, oxygen is critical to your survival. And the gas that we breathe out is primarily carbon dioxide. So there's this cycle where the body is taking in oxygen and it is producing carbon dioxide. And for many years, scientists were of the opinion that carbon dioxide was simply a waste gas and it really had nothing important or it didn't have an important role in the body. But those that study breathing understand that carbon dioxide plays a crucial role in every breath you take. And that is because carbon dioxide accumulating in the blood is the primary stimulus to breathe. So when we breathe less, carbon dioxide accumulates in the blood, it sends a signal to the brain center and tells the brain, hey, you need to breathe. And when you consciously hold your breath, the body will start to fight back and it will give you a stress response. So when you're hiking uphill and you're breathing a lot and you're going into altitude where the oxygen is lower, you're likely going to be accumulating a lot more carbon dioxide, which is giving your brain the signal that you need to breathe more. Now, how could we improve this? Well, you can improve your fitness, but that's probably not going to have that much of an impact on how you respirate in the mountains, simply because the way that you breathe at rest is the determinants of how the brain understands respiration for you. So this has to be applied in practice at rest seated like I am now. Later on, of course, we can apply hypoventilation to our activities, hypo meaning low, so breathing less, but initially it's far more useful to warm up, to teach the brain to accumulate carbon dioxide and be relaxed at the same time. So that's what all of these breathing exercises that I'm showing you in this video are going to do. But the key here is that you need to relax. If you're doing the box breathing exercise and you're starting to feel tension uh, in the jaw, in the upper respiratory muscles, if you're getting tightness in the shoulders, if you're experiencing stress in any way, that is not going to help you. You need to consciously override the stress response and relax into the stress. And that concept is the second important factor here, which is the psychophysiological component of 
limited breathing, meaning that there is a relationship with the brain that is interpreting this stress as a bad thing. It's interpreting it as a threat. And by doing breath training, essentially what we're doing is we are repatterning the brain and teaching it that it is safe to accumulate carbon dioxide. Now you can imagine that if you teach your body to uh, be relaxed with a higher dose of carbon dioxide in the blood while you're at rest, then the same thing is going to apply when you're in the mountains. Which is why when I start teaching my students and my clients about breath training, we do all of it being seated and relaxed initially. And later, then we can get into hypoventilation, meaning low, so breathing less, whilst doing the activity. But initially we have to start being relaxed and breathing at rest. So, so far we've talked about the biochemistry, we've talked about carbon dioxide, and we've just recently talked about the psychophysiological component, which really ties into how long we are breathing at each stage of the breath. And the third component of functional breathing that I want to speak on is the biomechanical side of breathing. And this can be a very important side for those of you who experience uh, joint pain, muscle tension, if you are chronically prone to injuries, if you feel like you're just tight and tense all the time, then your biomechanics of the breathing is likely playing a role in how your body assumes a nice postural alignment of your head, your thorax and your pelvis. So how these three main skeletal bodies are balanced will essentially make up your posture. And the interesting thing here is that the respiratory diaphragm, the muscle that pulls your lungs down essentially, is playing a huge role in stabilizing your pelvis and your rib cage. And that is why so many people go around and around in circles trying to discover the source of their pain and their injuries and their body asymmetries and they don't get anywhere. And that may be because they're not looking at respiration and how important it is to the body. When we take a look at the respiratory diaphragm, it sits smack bang in the middle of the body and it is a very large muscle. And each inhale you take, that diaphragm is lowering and each exhale you take, the diaphragm is raising. And it's playing a huge role in how your pelvis and your rib cage are stabilizing and balancing and finding alignment in terms of your posture. So if you've been trying to improve your posture, if you've been trying to get out of pain and you haven't looked at the diaphragm's role and the role that it plays in postural stability, then I think that would be something to look into because uh, it certainly helped me and it certainly helps many of my clients. And in my opinion now, after having worked with clients for many years on this, you simply cannot start to address muscular imbalances and chronic pain and injuries without first looking at the role that the respiratory diaphragm is playing in your movement capability. So we have biochemistry, we have psychophysiology, and we have biomechanics. They are the three components of functional breathing, which any serious researcher that looks at breathing will look at breathing in those three dimensions. And so when you understand these three dimensions, you can start to apply different breathing exercises in order to get the outcome that you want. And if you're a hiker, likely the outcome that you want is to breathe less and be more comfortable when you're hiking. Now, if you wanna take this further and understand it deeper, I would encourage you to subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna be sharing a lot more on the breathing side of things, as I've mentioned. But also, if you just wanna get right into this and start diving into it, then I would recommend just getting my Momentum membership where we have a breathing module and all of this information in there. So you can start by doing a bolt test, which is a very important part of determining whether you have a breathing issue to solve. And I'm actually gonna take you through that now. Let's do this test together. The bolt test is essentially a measurement of how comfortable you are at accumulating carbon dioxide in the blood. This has been used by breathing researchers as far back as 1975. And the important thing about this test is that you can't improve on this test with willpower alone. It is entirely reliant on you being honest and it's also a reliance on you really having a, a good sense of your own body. And so this test actually takes practice. The first time that you do this, you'll likely get a higher score than what is the actual score. But anyway, I'm gonna take you through it and you can get at least a, a good baseline here. We're gonna take a small breath in and a small breath out through the nose, then we'll pinch the nose and hold, and then we'll start a timer. And we're gonna to continue to hold the breath, and we're gonna to continue to relax 
and we're going to feel the sensations of the body. And what we're looking for here is the first definite desire to breathe from the body. So carbon dioxide is accumulating in the blood and soon enough we're going to get a signal from the body that is perhaps uh, a tightness in the throat, a, a contraction of the respiratory diaphragm, any involuntary contraction of any breathing muscle around the neck, the jaw and around the rib cage. So we're waiting for that sign from the body. And your first breath in should be a calm breath in through the nose. So you definitely don't want to hold your breath to the extent that your first breath in is, you know, you failed the test. What we need to do is relax and wait for that first sign to breathe. Now, it may come in at five seconds. It may come in at eight seconds. Most people tend to come in at around 15 to 20 seconds, maybe a little bit longer, maybe 25. And if you've got a bolt score of 25 or above, that is a very good sign because it shows that you have an 89% chance that your breathing is functional. So by now you should have your score. Hopefully your first breath in was basically silent, very calm in through the nose. And likely you felt some kind of involuntary muscle contraction of a breathing muscle somewhere around the chest and that was the end of the test for you. So the idea here is to continue to practice this test very regularly. I get my clients to do it every day. And when we're applying the breathing exercises, we see that the bolt score goes up and that means your body is getting better at tolerating carbon dioxide. Now there is a couple of limitations to the bolt test. One of them being that uh, it is entirely reliant on your ability to sense your own body. So what I like to do is combine the bolt test with another test to determine if we're really on the right track here in terms of understanding respiration, and that's the maximum breathlessness test. And this one can be determined by uh, or improved by willpower. And essentially what we do is take a small breath in, small breath out through the nose. We pinch the nose and hold, and we start walking. And we walk at a normal pace, and we count how many paces that you can accumulate with the breath held. Now, whilst you're walking and holding the breath, first of all, nitric oxide is going to be accumulating in the nose. That's going to help open up the nasal airway. So if you are really struggling to be able to breathe through your nose, doing breath holds and pinching the nose will drastically help with that. And there's plenty of exercises on the internet that will show you how to do that. But you continue walking, you continue counting the steps that you can take until you just can't do it any further and then you will have a number of steps, and that is your maximum breathlessness test in a number. Now, how do we determine if these two tests are accurate? Well, usually the maximum breathlessness test will be double that of the bolt score or thereabouts. So if you did the bolt score and you ended up with 40, which is great, but then you did your maximum breathlessness test and you only scored 50, then that's probably telling us that your actual bolt score is more like 25. And so in that case, you need to continue to do the bolt test. You need to really get the, the mind-body connection happening and really focus and really listen to that first sign to breathe. And that will give you a more accurate bolt score. So there you have these two tests and you have an exercise and you have the understanding of the science of how this works then you can start to apply it and i want you to start applying it because it makes a massive difference it has made a huge difference to my hiking it's made a huge difference to my life it's made a huge difference to my clients lives they are astounded when they see the results that come into play from just sitting down and, and relaxing and breathing and i really believe that relaxing is something that we are fundamentally missing in our society. We're not very good at relaxing anymore, but crucially relaxing is a skill and skills we can practice. And relaxing is becoming increasingly difficult for obvious reasons. So putting some time and attention into consciously relaxing can be very, very beneficial. Um, not can be, it really is. Because if you're chronically full of tension and you're unable to relax, then you're probably not gonna live as long. So where could you go to find more information and more exercises with which to train your breathing? Well, there is an app which is entirely free called Oxygen Advantage and there are many, many different breathing exercises on there that you can listen to and apply and follow along to. And like I said, it's completely free. Everything on there is available. There's no paywall. So uh, breathing, is, breathing is free. <laughs> there's, there's nothing to buy. However, if you would like my help. So the Hikeflow method is my one-to-one -one coaching program. 
where I put a great deal of effort into prioritizing relaxation and improving the relationship between the mind and the body with the aim of making hiking, climbing, mountaineering a lot more easy and a lot more enjoyable. And at the same time, I'm often being a personal researcher and troubleshooting with people trying to figure out what the source of their discomfort and pain is. And it could be anything from the relationship with the teeth and the jaw to uh, neuroplastic pain, so learned pain, or it could be a biomechanical or a breathing issue or a biochemistry issue. So I, that's what I'm putting most of my time into. And uh, if you would like to apply, then I'll leave a link below and we can work together. So if you're looking to get uh, my personal take on these exercises and how to apply them, then that is a good place to go as well. I'm gonna call it there guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the summit.